Welcome back. In the last section, we set up some simple gain controls in the name controls bin, and then accessed our design using Windows Telnet clients. Now, it's time to start issuing controls to the design. All of the commands we're going to issue will be short acronyms, and you can find a complete list of available commands and what they stand for in the help file. Just look for external control protocol in the search bar. Now the first command we're going to use is SG, which stands for status get. Press enter and you should immediately get an SR or status response, followed by the name of the QSIS design, which in our case is EC tutorial, an unreadable alphanumeric string followed by one space one. Just so you know, the strange letters and numbers are a randomly generated design ID, which can be stored and then used to determine if the design has changed over time. This is regenerated each time a design is redeployed or emulated. After this ID, final two numbers represent which core is active in a redundant system. If you're not running a redundant core, then both will be one. If you did have a redundant core, then the first number represents your primary core, and the second number represents your secondary core. Whichever is active will be a one, and the other will be a zero. The SG command is a good way to establish that you've made a connection to your design. Let's get to changing those gain controls. We'll use the CSV command, which stands for Control Set Value. This control then needs two different parameters, the name of the control to change and the desired value to change it to. Ours is named Gain Gain, and the value is negative 10, with each parameter separated by a space. You might remember earlier that I mentioned if you have a space in the name of your control, you have to do some extra work later, well, that comes into play now. You have to put quotation marks around a name of a control that has a space in it. That way the command knows that the space is part of the control's name and not the next parameter. Also, the names of the controls are case sensitive, and be sure to type it correctly the first time. If you make a mistake and hit backspace in Telnet, you'll receive an error when you launch the command. For this reason, it's a good idea to not give your controls unnecessarily long names. All right, let's hit enter to issue this command. You instantly get a response of CV gain gain, negative 10 dB and negative 10.75. So what does this mean? CV is a response reporting back to us the control value now that we've issued our command. The name of the control in question is gain gain, and it tells us its current status in three different ways, a string, a value, and a position. These are all different representations of the same knob setting, and you can parse any or all of these. The string is text-based. It shows exactly what the control within QSIS Designer says on its DB scale. The value is a purely numerical representation of the control status and the position represents the control's location in a range between 0 and 1. Controls that toggle between on and off would show a 0 is off and a 1 is on. For a fader, 0 would be all the way down and 1 would be all the way up, so anything in between will be represented by a floating point number between 0 and 1. 0.5, for instance, would be if the knob was set to the middle. In this case, negative 10 decibels equates to 0.75, or 75%. When we changed this control, we used the CSV command to set its value to negative 10. If you wanted to set its string or its position, then you would use the CSS, the control set string command, or CSP, the control set position command. Be sure that the type of command you're issuing matches the information that you're sending. For instance, if you sent a control set position command of zero, the control wouldn't be set to zero decibels, it would be set all the way down to negative 100 decibels because that's the bottom of the position range. All right, let's use these commands to activate our mute button. Type CSP, or control set position, gain mute, space one, and enter. This time, it reports back a control value for gain mute as muted, space one, space one. This means the control's string is muted, its value is one, or on, and its position is also one. If you go back to QSIS Designer and look at your gain component, you'll notice the controls have indeed been affected by our commands. Feel free to split your screen as you issue some more commands to see it in action. One topic we get asked about frequently is how to implement a volume bump feature using the protocol. This might not seem very obvious, but to do this, you use the control set string command with plus plus one or minus minus one. 
the one can be substituted with any other value you'd like to jump by. We've also recently added the alternate version of plus equals one and minus equals one, which work the same as the other strings. In the command line, type CSS, control set string, space gain gain, space plus plus one. The protocol will recognize that this string is not the explicit control value, and instead it will increment or decrement the control by the specified amount. Watch the control when you press enter, and you'll see that it increases in level by one decibel. There are many other commands listed in the help file for the external control protocol. Now that you have a basic understanding of this protocol, the other commands will make much more sense. Some useful ones I'd like to point out are the csvr command, or control set value ramp, which lets you input an amount of time for a control to gradually change values, rather than just popping immediately to the destination value. If you'd like to activate a trigger, such as a play trigger, which doesn't have a value, you would use the CT command, or control trigger. And if you want to load or save snapshots, you could use the SSL, or SSS commands, snapshot load and snapshot save. If you want to tell QSYS that you're a 16-year-old girl, you could type BRB, LOL, and it will respond with YOLO. Okay. That one's not real. But you can look around the help file to see even more examples. We have overlooked one very simple command, the CG, or control get command. There are many situations in which you may be interested in knowing a control status without sending it a change command first. Let's type CG gain gain and enter. You'll get the same response you would get after changing the control. It shows the control string, value, and position. If your control system will be doing all the polling of QSYS, this is really all you need to do to monitor each named control in the system. Polling a few controls periodically may not be a challenge, but what if you have dozens or hundreds of controls to poll? That amount of CG commands can get very burdensome to program and maintain. The good news is that ECP has two very useful features to greatly simplify polling. In the next video, we'll take a look at these two features, change groups and change group scheduling. Let's take a quick break and move on to the next video whenever you're ready.